Rust just got an update that added a bunch of new settings, so here's an updated settings guide to get the most FPS possible. Starting with the gameplay settings. First things first, you're going to up the field of view to 90, this just lets you see more. Then you're going to want to make sure that head bob is turned off, and the rest of these settings are personal preference. The only setting you really need to change now is max gibbs and turn that all the way down to zero. The higher this setting is, the more debris you'll see when you break things. When it comes to the user interface settings, all of these are personal preference. When it comes to the audio settings, again these are personal preference, but I would recommend turning off the music. Now when it comes to the control settings, it's best just to use whatever you're comfortable with, but one setting I would recommend changing is hover loop. You're going to want to change this to a mouse button. It makes it a lot easier to move while looting. Now in the screen settings, I'd recommend using the native resolution of your monitor, as well as setting the mode to full screen. Then you want to make sure that V-Sync's turned off, and when it comes to FPS limit, just say it to the hertz of your monitor. Now in the graphics settings, this is where a lot of the new settings are. For render scale, you're going to want to keep this at 1. And then for DLSS and DLAA, you're going to want to keep both of these off. When it comes to global rendering, I'd keep this off as well. For shader level, I like to keep this on 600, but if you want more FPS, you can turn it down. Now for draw distance, I keep it on 1000, but if you want, you could turn this up to 2000. For parallax mapping, I keep this on 0. And then for water quality and water reflections, I keep both of these on 0 as well. For grass displacement, you're going to want to keep this on, as having this on makes it way easier to see dropped weapons on the floor. For grass shadows, you're going to want to turn this off. And for NVIDIA Reflex Mode, you're going to either set this to ON, or ON plus Boost. For Terrain Billboards, you're going to turn this off, and for Soft Particles, I like to have this turned off as well. Then when it comes to Pixel Light Count, as well as Particle Raycast Budget, you're going to want to set these to as low as possible. And then when it comes to LOD Bias, I have this set to 1, but you can turn this up if you want. Now when it comes to Textures, for Texture Mip Maps, if you have a bad graphics card, you can set this to a quarter resolution or an eighth resolution, but if you have a decent graphics card, I'd set this to half resolution. For Anisotropic filtering mode, I have this on per texture, and for anisotropic filtering level, I have this set to 1. Now when it comes to shadows, you might think to turn this down for the most FPS, but doing this will make your shadows look really bad. Instead, what I'd do is set your quality to 1, keep your shadow mask mode on shadow mask, set the resolution to medium, and the cascades to 2. This will make your shadows look pretty good and won't lose you much FPS. For max distance percentage, you're going to keep this on zero. For max shadow lights, you're going to want to set this to zero, as having it set to zero can help you see things in the dark. Now when it comes to mesh quality, for the most FPS you want to turn all these off, but I have them turned up a little bit just to make your game look nicer. Now for image effects, I'd recommend turning all these off, except sharpen. Keeping sharpen on just makes the game look nicer. Now for accessibility, these are all personal preference. But if you turn the tree marker colour to orange, it's a lot easier to see at night. Then for experimental, turn on automatic processor affinity, and make sure the optimised loading is set to partial. This will let you load into servers much quicker. Then for GC buffer, you're going to want to turn this up to the max. And that's all for the in-game settings. Finally, I'd recommend setting some launch options for Rust. What you want to do is go to Rust in your Steam library, click on Properties, and this is where you can set some launch options. I'll have my launch options in the description below. And that's all the tips I've got for this video, but if you want to learn 101 Rust tips and tricks, click this video.